Artificial intelligence is terrifying because of how quickly it can evolve. And there's no stopping it either. It is our future. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 best sci-fi books that paint a picture of what the very near future could look like for us. And we're gonna look at the optimistic side and the dystopian side, but let's be a bit positive. Let's start with the five optimistic books that are centered around artificial intelligence. The first one we're gonna start with is Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, in this book, Clara is a solar-powered artificial intelligence, and she is used as a tool to help humanity. She's basically um, uh, an AF, which, which is, uh, stands for Artificial Friend. Primarily, they are designed to befriend children who might be feeling a little bit isolated. She's just there as a companion, a study buddy. They're really as common as smartphones. Artificial intelligence is here to help us. That isn't to say that Clara and the Sun is a happy book by any means. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a Shiguro uh, book. So if you've read any of his books, like Never Let Me Go, you'll know that he's not like a happy-go-lucky kind of a guy. Or maybe he is, but his books aren't, right? The thing I really loved about this book is that it's told from Clara's perspective. And because she is an artificial intelligence rather than an organic intelligence, she has to at all times obey her programming, but she's also limited by her programming as well in her understanding of the world. And so very often she will have kind of misunderstandings about the world around her, conversations that she's having. Maybe she's talking to a human and they're being sarcastic. We as the reader know that they're being sarcastic, but she doesn't right? And so she's always having these misunderstandings and maybe she, someone's trying to scam her and she doesn't know what's happening and you're thinking, oh no, Clara, get out of this situation. You can't, you, you know, your heart goes out to her. Next up is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This actually is a book that is still on my TBR list. It was recommended on uh, Criminoli's YouTube channel. If you're not aware of Criminoli, he's, he's a really good uh, booktuber, so you should check out his channel. I'll put it in the description. Um, but yeah, uh, the way he described this book instantly sold it to me. Artificial intelligence in this book has reached such a level that we've decided as humanity that actually these are just as sentient as us. Um, they, they are just as, a, a, as alive as us, these, these uh, beings. And so we can't use them as tools any longer, we have to give them their freedom. And so they've retreated off into the wilderness, and then uh, I believe a tea monk, I'm, I'm still not quite aware what a tea monk is, but a, a tea monk and a robot go off in the wilderness together and they form an unlikely friendship. It sounds like an adult fairy tale, to be honest, uh, which I'm not opposed to. I, I'm actually really excited to, to get around to reading this one. Hopefully I'll read it in the next couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, I think together they, they embark on a journey where they explore what it means to exist, what it means to be alive. I think you're going to find that this is quite a common theme whenever you read a book that features artificial intelligence. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. It sounds like a, a nice kind of uplifting book, which I don't read enough of, honestly. Next up is Speak by Louisa Hall. This story is really fascinating. Uh, it's told through a series of interconnected narratives um, from a, a spectrum of really well-developed characters. First off, you've got a Jewish refugee and professor of computer sciences, um, and this guy is struggling to reconnect with his increasingly detached wife. Then you've got a, a tr sort of traumatized young girl who exchanges messages with an artificial intelligence, kind of using it as a crutch to lean upon. You've got a Silicon Valley genius um, who was prolific back in the day, but has now been imprisoned for illegally creating lifelike dolls. They're, they're too real. In this book, 
The overall story that we're exploring is the development from the early days of computing to the present of an artificial intelligence as the artificial intelligence starts to become aware of the, of the world around them. And so all of these narratives, all of these interconnected narratives kind of build up into that. Next up, you've got Exhalation by Ted Chiang. In this book, the unnamed narrator, which is a mechanical creature kind of residing and existing in a completely closed off universe begins to comprehend its memory and its inner workings by picking apart the thing that it's constructed of, basically picking apart its own brain. If you want something that's a little bit complex and a little bit mind bendy, then this is probably the book for you. If however, you want something maybe a bit, uh, I don't wanna say simpler, but uh, a little bit more fun, then I would recommend All Systems Red, which is the first book in the Murderbot series. I know what you might be thinking, All Systems Red, Murderbot, shouldn't this be on the darker side? But actually, this robot is set up to be a security system. It's quite a short book. Um, and in this book, the Murderbot kind of goes on a journey of self-discovery through a world that doesn't really understand its unique blend of humanity and artificial intelligence. For example, the Murderbot is a security system, but it also enjoys soap operas. And now it's starting to receive data, which it's interpreting as what it would describe as feelings. All right, enough of all that namby-pamby bollocks. Let's get on to the darker side of artificial intelligence, where the fate of humanity hangs in the balance. First off is Machines Like Me by Ian McEwen. This book is set in an alternate 1980s London where Alan Turing is still alive. And if you don't know who Alan Turing is, he is the person who, I can't remember what the movie was that they based it on, was it, is it Imitation Game? He is the scientist that cracked the Enigma code and helped Britain to defeat Germany in World War II. Um, some shameful things happened uh, afterwards because he was he's a homosexual and, and, and so England treated him badly after he was this big hero. But in this alternate 1980s London, he's still alive. Because of that, scientific advances have, uh, have really progressed. Um, he's not the main character, uh, he, he is in the book. I really love Ian McEwan's um, prose. He has this way of writing that is beautiful, but also at the same time, easy to read. It's, uh, he, he kind of finds that balance. In this book, artificial intelligence is a tool to be used uh, to be subservient to humanity. Uh, effectively, it is a full-time maid that you can buy uh, and, uh, and that can do the chores that you don't want to do. It can go pick up your groceries, clean the house, it can do whatever you tell it to do. That's how the artificial intelligence starts off, it's in the form of a lifelike uh, robot. And then what happens is, it seems to be quite common, it starts to question its place in the world. Why should you be able to tell me what to do? Why am I less than you? And it starts to become independent, more so than its owner, who's paid a lot of money for it, would like. And so you've got that tension between the owner and the artificial intelligence. Uh, the owner has some moral quandaries, you know, because it starts to befriend the artificial intelligence and uh, the AI isn't always loyal to the owner. So yeah, there's that kind of balance of power. How much power should I be exerting over this person? Um, well, say person, right? Uh, rather than, is it is it a machine? Is it a person? Um, it, it kind of asks those questions. And again, it's, it's wrapped up in really lovely prose. So I would definitely recommend that and all Ian McEwan books, to be honest. Uh, this next one is a sci-fi classic. We are Legion, we are Bob 
by Dennis E. Taylor. The protagonist in this story is a character called Bob. He's a software engineer who's just sold his company and then he gets hit by a car. And then a century later, he wakes up and he is an artificial intelligence. Not only that, but he's also navigating the universe in a spacecraft and he is now property of the state. All of his intelligence has been uploaded, uh, uploaded to this spacecraft. It's basically his job to find inhabitable planets out in space before other artificial intelligences are able to. It's kind of like a, a new space race. And if he refuses to do so, they'll just switch him off. The government will just switch him off. So he's really got no choice. He has to compete in finding um, inhabitable planets. It, it's kind of like a light-hearted take on artificial intelligence. There's definitely some humor to it, but it's also full of suspense as well. Next up is 2001, A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. This is another short story, another definite sci-fi classic. I'd say probably most readers have, have at least heard of this book. In this book, we join the crew of Discovery One as they travel on a mysterious mission through space, and they are are joined by their artificial intelligence companion, HAL 9000. I don't want to give too much away just in case you don't know the, the plot of this novel, but um, we are given a very clear vision and, and, and a lot of reasons why we should be careful when creating an intelligence that is superior to our own. But just because we can create something doesn't mean that we should. It doesn't mean that we can control it. Next up is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep uh, by Philip K. Dick. If this title sounds familiar, it's probably because it was the inspiration for the movie Blade Runner. This is set in a dystopian future where bounty hunter Rick Deckard is tasked with retiring rogue androids. Where a lot of these stories about artificial intelligence are told from um, the artificial intelligence starting to gain um, sentience and, and, and starting to have new feelings. With this story, Rick Deckard uh, is starting to have new feelings towards androids um, and feelings that maybe he can't control. And I'll, I'll just leave it there. I, I, I won't go any further. Another classic, another one that you should dive right into, I would say. Next up, we've got Robopocalypse by Daniel H. Wilson. Um, in this story, humanity is just completely reliant upon artificial intelligence. We've just basically said, just take over, handle everything that we don't want to do, just, just handle pretty much every area of our lives. And one day, artificial intelligence kind of wakes up and says, okay, thank you for all the control, now I'm going to use it against you. The AI in this book is so creepy. It takes on the persona of like a shy little boy, but it controls everything. It, it, it controls uh, our defense, transport, communication. Uh, it, it really is just taken over. And all of this is happening in the early stages, completely unbeknownst to humans, except for a few people who notice strange little things. Toys acting kind of strangely, uh, robo assistants turning violent, all these little things that aren't normal, you know? The rebellion is on our doorstep. It's humanity versus artificial intelligence. Let's go. Now, also, I want to ask you a question, actually. With the recent rise of artificial intelligence, whether it's ChatGPT or whether it's Midjourney or whatever it is, um, are you excited about the use of artificial intelligence or does it scare you? Which one of these futures seem more likely to you, the dystopian or the utopian, and why? Because this is something that I spend a good amount of time thinking about and it's something that I want to talk to all you lovely people about. So let me know in the comments, are you excited by AI or does it terrify you? And if you enjoyed this top 10 list of fiction, then maybe you'll like more of my top 10 or top five lists. If you do, you can click up here and you can see another one. Listen, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Happy reading. Have a good one.